Sadly, a Catholic church was set fire in Poland this week in response to, I hate to even say this out loud, in response to a police report about a homosexual orgy at the church. Read about it in LifeSite News. I'm going to talk about it today. Here is this beautiful church in Poland and at the rectory, which I assume is in the bottom right with the red roof. There was an orgy involving a priest and a male prostitute and allegedly one or two more priests, though some reports say just the priest and the male prostitute. Now, is it too much to ask at this point for the clergy to not have orgies? The clergy, according to St. Thomas Aquinas, are to be the purifiers and the illuminators of the laity as their shepherds. The clergy are celibate. They forego as a sacrifice to Christ the gift and sacrament of matrimony so that they can focus more deeply and more purely into the holy sacrifice, the Mass, and preaching the gospel and teaching the sacred scriptures and the sacred tradition given by Jesus Christ to the apostles once for all. That's why our priests are celibate. And it is just a kick in the gut and a kick elsewhere. I won't say it. We're on a family show. To see priests, to hear about priests having drug-fueled homosexual orgies. We had this happen a couple years back in Rome at the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, now called the Dicastery, the Doctrine of the Faith, formerly called the Holy Inquisition or the Holy Office. Cocaine-fueled drug orgy party in which the police have to come. And here's what happened in Poland. First off, the fire. On September 21st, an unidentified person, this is from LifeSite, an unidentified person or person set fire to the wooden doors of the Basilica of St. Mary of the Angels in Dabrowa Gorinska, a small town in southwestern Poland. The arson occurred the day after the story broke in a national left-wing newspaper, Gazeta Viborska claiming that a homosexual orgy had taken place in the rooms of one of the priests serving the clergy. Now, when this came out, a lot of people said, hey, this is liberal propaganda. This newspaper is atheistic. It's left-wing. It's bad. But I have seen numerous people, good Catholics, in Poland, in this area, saying this is legit. And we also know it's legit because the bishop has come out and made a statement. He says Bishop Kazak has made two official statements confirming that there is both a civil and a canonical investigation into events at this parish. And on September 22nd, he wrote to the priest of the diocese expressing sorrow and asking for penitential services to be held in reparation of these grave immoral crimes of a homosexual orgy happening on church property. He says, the bishop, the recent events in Dabrova Gorinska have filled us with great pain, shame, and anger. We don't know exactly everything that happened. And by the way, I'm, I'm reading here off of LifeSite's translation. Full article, go to lifesitenews.com. The title of the article is Polish Basilica Set on Fire. We don't know everything that happened. The procurator's office is investing the case as a violation of civil law, whereas our commission is investigating it as a violation of divine and canon law. 
as I write these words, says the bishop, the work is still going on. It's difficult exactly to say what happened. Now, we do have some info from the Popo, the police. Let me pull that up. Police were called to the church because during the party, the sex worker who was hired to be there, who had been using chem sex drugs, I don't know what that is. I kind of don't even want to know what chem sex drugs are. But during this diabolical, illicit, scandalous, sacrilegious orgy, the sex worker, male sex worker, prostitute, became unconscious. So he lost consciousness during whatever horrible, disgusting things are happening. And one of the guests at this party called for an ambulance. But when the first responders arrived at the church, they were not allowed to enter. So my guess here, the priest or whoever is involved here realizes this is a mega scandal. They got a guy who could be dying. They got the paramedics. This is all going to be documented. The police were called. They got involved to get into the building. And then the paramedics were able to get to the man who has passed out for whatever reasons who with the chem sex drugs. I don't know what's going on here. Now, the chief person in trouble here, they're protecting his identity under Polish law, but the article in LifeSite here is referring to him generically as Father Tomas. Okay, that's not his real name. And that is the civil element. And then we also have the bishop saying, hey, we need to have prayers of penance and so on. Now, there's a, there's a Polish-American reporter who's in this article named Philip Maruzka, Maruzek. Uh, he said, in the past, many men in Poland and elsewhere entered the seminary for the wrong reasons. And you all know this is true because you watched the Dr. Taylor Marshall podcast and you've read the book, Infiltration. You can get a copy of it. You can also get the audio version of Infiltration. This is the story of how seminaries in the priesthood were infiltrated beginning in the 1800s, climaxing really in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Still to this day, though, big problem. He says, some priests entered the seminary in the priesthood for socio-political advancement, while others to conceal their homosexuality. Naturally, not all priests entered the seminary for those reasons in the past, but those were common reasons, and I document why that is in the book Infiltration. He says, I think there are now only men with genuine vocation becoming priests. I'm not so sure about, about that. Why? Because I talk to people in seminaries. And it's not over yet. There is still a lavender mafia that is a group of men in seminaries in the priesthood who are not living chaste lives. And that's sadly just a fact. I'm going to go to comments and questions here. I want to hear from y'all on your thoughts on this. And... Here are my thoughts. Here's my monologue. It is absolutely necessary for the evangelization of all human persons and for the young people, right? There are young people in the world who are completely confused about human sexuality, all right? The things that they hear in public schools, the things that they hear at college and universities, the things that they hear in their own family. And we're talking about divorce. We're talking about adultery. 
We're now talking about fornication, premarital sex, but now we're also in our time talking about other unnatural forms of sexuality, including the plague of hardcore pornography. And people are just confused sexually. And the light on the hill, the lighthouse for ships out in sea during the storm should be the chaste priest who bear the title, the title of the first person of the Trinity, Father. The lighthouses in our time should be the supernaturally celibate, chaste men who are conformed to Christ in persona Christi, in the person of Christ. They have the power to confect the miracle of transubstantiation, to absolve sinners, and they bear the name Father because broken sexuality is a crisis of fatherhood. It's ultimately a theological crisis. If you agree with me, go ahead and do the thumbs up. Like the video, share the video. We have a crisis of fatherhood. To the extent that the papacy, the cardinals, the bishops, and the priests, and the religious, and the deacons, and the fathers, lay fathers, and lay mothers, do not become icons and images of the love of God, of the mystery of Christ in the church. The church is the bride. Christ is the husband. To the extent that these icons, these sacred images, become defaced, fractured, vandalized, you will see the world spin out of control, degrade itself in the most unnatural vices, because it is the icon of fatherhood. It is the holy mystery of husband and wife, Christ and the church, that brings down graces into the world so that people, the next generation, can know what does it mean to be a human? What is a man? What is a woman? What is holy matrimony? And those who are charged chiefly to bring about those mysteries, those icons, and those images are the priests, the presbyters, the elders, the offerers, the victims, priest victims, as Fulton Sheen said. The priest is the victim, just like Christ was the victim on the cross, and he's also the priest who offers the sacrifice to the Father. So wouldn't you know it, we have crazy liturgies, which also break down the image and the icon of heavenly realities. We have unchaste clergy. We have clergy given to their gut and to their loins. Gluttony and lust. Those are antithetical to the mystery of the gospel which is deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. So what we're seeing here is the destruction of the supernatural order. Now, Christ said the gates of hell will not prevail. That doesn't mean there aren't casualties along the way. We all know that. The greatest heretics have been priests. Arius. Nestorius was the Archbishop Patriarch of Constantinople. Eutyches with the Monophysites. Martin Luther, right? It's the priest. It's an inside job. It's infiltration almost every single time. But grace flows downhill. Read the Old Testament. When the priest and the king become wicked and idolatrous and fornicators, the people become wicked, idolatrous, and fornicators. Grace flows downhill. We are living in a Babylonian captivity right now. I don't know how long it's going to last. The Babylonian captivity in the Old Testament lasted 70 years. So start your clock at 1958 or 1965 or wherever you see, see that happening. 
70 years, maybe God will deliver us in 70 years. But the problem is, is that the icon, the imagery, the mysteries of purity, chastity, obedience, wholesomeness, family life, large families, celibacy, chastity, all of these things that were miracles to the ancient Roman culture, which was depraved and degenerate. They saw Christians like those people are chaste. Those people have a supernatural life. And that converted the Roman Empire and many other nations like Armenia, Georgia, Ethiopia, to the ends of the world. I know it is a punch in the face, a knee to the gut, and a kick in the balls every time we read one of these stories about orgies, pedophile priests, embezzlements, scandals in the church. The only way it will get better is top down. I know that's discouraging because you look right now to the Vatican City, not a really encouraging situation over there. That's why we have to pray and fast and be chaste and be wholesome. Maybe you're raising the next, or not the next, a future pope. Maybe you're raising one of the next great saints, St. Therese of Lisieux, little flower. Maybe you're raising Saint, the next St. Bernard of Clairvaux or the next St. Francis of Assisi or the next Thomas Aquinas or Catherine of Siena. But until this gets fixed, it's just going to hurt more. That's part of life, the pain and the suffering. The more that there is evil in the world, when you have evil in the world and you confront it with love, which is what Christ tells us to do, when there's evil and you confront evil with love, it yields suffering. And if you don't believe me, look at Jesus on the cross. He came to confront evil. He confronted it with love. And what was the end result? Crucifixion, scourging, crown of thorns, humiliation. Sadly, sadly, in the Catholic Church, it has been a time of humiliation. Go on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter, Taylor R. Marshall on Twitter. I engage with Protestants all the time. They mock us. They post these horrific stories. And people say, Taylor, why are you talking about this? It's scandalous. They're all watching it, reading it. We as Catholics have to say, That's, that does not represent us. We do not believe that priests should be having homosexual orgies at churches. We are more against it than y'all are. We have to, in our own little way, like little hobbits, make a stand and say this is wrong for our children especially. I'm going to do some comments and some questions. Uh, if you don't mind, please like and share the video. I would appreciate it. Let's get those numbers up. How many people we got today? All right, we're coming up on 1,000. Very good. Only 359 likes, though. You got to get the likes up, even though today's a bad subject. Got to admit it. All right, comments and questions. Bo Yeshua says, I went to events with America Needs Fatima. The evil I've seen. Yeah, I've, America Needs Fatima is where you go out with some banners. You pray the rosary in public. A lot of people honk and say, good job, pray the rosary. And then some people don't do that, unfortunately. Going into your comments and into your questions. Renee says, Protestant mockery is an understatement. It is. I mean, the Protestants see this stuff and they just laugh and laugh and laugh. Like, you believe in the priesthood? You believe these men can turn bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus. Y'all are fools. We're not fools. We've been infiltrated. It's true. The priesthood is true. Jesus said, do this in memory of me. He says in John chapter 20, verses 20 through 24, he breathed on the holy apostles. <sighs> And he said, receive the Holy Ghost. 
Whosoever sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whosoever sins you bind, they are bound. It's in the Gospels, Gospel of John right there. He created priests. Priests are real. Fortunately, there are also Judas's evil men in the priesthood. This is a great embarrassment to us Catholics. People are writing what these chemsex drugs are. Don't want to know. Do not want to know. Uh, Zolf says, Poland is a very traditional and Catholic country. This could have just been done on purpose to offend the feelings of many and God Almighty. We should ask God for forgiveness. I agree. But remember, this is not just some people breaking into a Catholic church. This is a priest having an orgy with a prostitute, male prostitute. Absolutely horrific. And I'm glad, and I commend the bishop for asking the clergy and the lay people, let's do acts of penance. It is the proper response, and hoorah for the bishop for doing the right thing. Coming into your comments and into your questions. Freddie Quotes uh, is, you got a super chat here. Revelations by Freddie Quotes on your Twitter today. All right, I'll check it out. People saying hello. Um, Matt says, was sodomy a big problem prior to the Novus Ordo? I've often wondered that myself, Matt. Um, I was recently reading a... Uh, a book by an ex-priest in the 1800s. And he was, he hates the church. I'm not going to say the name of the book or the priest, but I, I thought it was interesting because I'm, you know, I'm always doing these, these, this research on the infiltration. And I wanted to see what, what he was saying. And his take as a former priest, having been a Catholic, I think for 50 years, and he said, having heard, thousands of priests, confessions, and all that. And he doesn't break the seal, as far as I can tell. But he says one in the 1800s, one of the tragedies in the Catholic priesthood is that priests were tempted to ask prying questions, sexual questions, to women in the confessional. He talks about how this was a major problem in the 1800s, and it was the occasion of the fall of many priests in the 1800s that they were tempted when they heard the confession of women to get too involved into the details. And it was a grave temptation for many priests. And reading that, this is the 1800s, I was waiting for him to ever go into the sodomy homosexual, and it doesn't really come up. I mean, here's a man who's trying to teach against the Roman Catholic Church, an ex-priest. And it seems the best he has is he's talking about these temptations of priests listening to female confessions. And so from that, I made the conclusion, because, I mean, this guy would have done anything to make the Catholic Church look dirty in the 1800s. It seems that historically this was the problem. And you'll, you know that in the 1500s, they started insisting on having a wall and a screen between priest and penitent to prevent any, any accusations, any advances, any touches, any anything because of this concern. It's also in canon law that if a priest solicits in the confessional or tries to absolve an accomplice, there is an automatic excommunication. So this has been handled before. But from what I could tell, uh, sodomy or, or same-sex attraction in the priesthood, at least in the 1800s in this account, did not seem to be present. Now, there is St. Peter Damien, who at the turn of the millennium is talking about sodomy, but he, he's locating it primarily in monasteries. It seems that in the diocesan structure, the temptation was for priests to have female concubines, their female housekeeper, who also was a concubine. But I'm doing more research. Um, I want to know. I want to know. Going back into your comments and into your questions, Michael Bauer says, Super Chat, 
We need quality, not quantity for clergy right now. And I couldn't agree more, Michael. One holy priest, like the Kudayar, can transform an entire city or nation. A bunch of bad priests will corrupt the morals. So yes, we need holy priests. And this is why you must pray for holy priests. Some Latin masses I go to at the end, they pray a decade. They pray for holy priests. Not just priests. Holy priests. We need holy priests. We need holy popes. Yes. Going back into your comments. Haptic says, sex and debauchery seem to be our downfall. Yes, I agree. Uh, people are asking about Father Altman. I'm letting things calm down a little bit. Um, I don't, as I've said before, many, many times, dozens of times, stay in the church, but also lay people and priests are not allowed and cannot declare a sede vacante. That pertains to the apostolic see the diocese of Rome. So we have to be very careful on that, but I also don't want to throw people under the bus or question people. So just being prudent and waiting and waiting. Going back into your comment, infiltration began in the 11th century. Actually, infiltration began with the fall of Satan. The very first infiltration was an inside job with Lucifer and one third of the angels. And you see an infiltration again with Adam and Eve in the garden. And you see um, infiltration again with Judas Iscariot. And you see infiltration again with the Gnostics and with the Arians and the Nestorians and the iconoclasts and the Manichaeans and the Protestant reformers. There's always this infiltration goes back to the very dawn of time, the Luciferian infiltration that happened even before Adam and Eve were created. Traditional Catholic says, go back to the way traditional seminaries were run. I agree. Here's the problem. Seminary is not college. Seminary is not grad school. You don't go to seminary chiefly to go to class or to listen to a professor. That's part of it. Seminary is chiefly there to make a man more holy on the path of sanctity and sanctification. Yes, he needs to know Latin. Yes, he needs to study Thomas Aquinas. But after seven to eight years of formation... He should be fasting. He should be doing penance. He should be advanced. Thomas Aquinas says in order to be a priest, you must be on the illuminative way. According to the Old Testament, according to the church fathers, especially Dionysius, the Areopagite, Thomas Aquinas says that to be a deacon, you must be in the purgative way. That means no mortal sins. You've purged that. You're dealing with venial sins. There's the purgative way. Then there's the illuminative way. Let me back up here. This is all based on the temple. You have the temple court, which is where you have sacrifice. That's the purgation. Then you have in the temple. That's the, where the menorah was, the light of God. That's illumination. And then you have the holy of holies. That's the unitive or the perfected state. Okay, so that's all based on the temple. It's on, it's on the Church Fathers, Gregory of Nyssa, Gregory of Nazianzus, Basil the Great, Dionysius the Areopagite. Thomas Aquinas says the deacon is the purgative way. The priest is the illuminative way. And the bishop is the unitive or the perfected way. And so Thomas Aquinas says to be a deacon, you must have removed all mortal sin from your life. You are habitually not in mortal sin. So if a young man is looking at pornography, having sexual encounters, masturbating, he should not be in seminary or becoming a deacon. 
Then once a man is a deacon in the purgative way, then he can become a priest in the illuminative way. And this is a man who is removing mortal sin, but venial sin. And then in the unitive way, the perfective way, this is the advanced, this is the walking saint in our midst. All right, this is the St. Therese, this is the Thomas Aquinas, the Bonaventure, the St. Paul, the St. Athanasius. These are the men who are removing not just mortal sin, not just venial sin, but slight imperfections, distractions, keeping them from loving God even more. This is the unitive way. And the way Thomas Aquinas understands this, coming from Dionysius the Areopagite, is that the bishop, in his perfected state, in his unitive state, is illuminating the priest. And the priest, in his illuminated state, is, is pur purging, perfecting, purifying the deacon. And then all three of those are perfecting, illuminating, and purging the laity below us. Thomas Aquinas says this is why it's so difficult to find good bishops, because you should be choosing the men who are on the unitive way. As you know, I've taught seminarians, not anymore, but in the old days I used to teach seminarians, and I had a good view of seminary life. Maybe not being a rector of a seminary, but got to spend a lot of time with seminary professors and seminarians, some of whom went on to be priests, some of whom discerned out. But I've seen that process. I remember once being in Rome with a group of seminarians, probably around 40 to 50 seminarians. And there was a priest there, a good priest. And he very frankly said to the group of seminarians there, it was a private group, there was no audience or people, no public. He said, I'm curious, these are all American seminarians from all over the United States. He said, I'm curious, in your seminary, is there any discussion of you having sins against chastity, in particular masturbation, as being an impediment to being ordained? He asked the whole group this. These are seminarians from California to New York. If I remember correctly, only about three or four seminarians raised their hand. They were from the Midwest. I won't say which diocese. And they said, yes, at our seminary, we are told that if you're masturbating or you're involved in sexual sins, you need to let us know because you should not be ordained a deacon or a priest. All the other seminarians were not taught that. And yet it's very much in the teaching of St. Thomas Aquinas. So, the clergy are there to elevate and perfect and illuminate the lay people. But if they are in the bondage of mortal sin, yes, they can, I'm not a Donatist, yes, they can still confect the sacraments. Yes, they can still transubstantiate. But in their pastoral priestly role, they are not the mirrors of the divine sanctifying power. They are not, remember, becoming a saint is about the acquisition of the Holy Spirit. The more you have the Holy Spirit, the more holy you are. Always remember that. The more you have the Holy Spirit, the more holy you are. So the men and women in this life who are diligent about the acquisition of the Holy Spirit, those are the people who are holy. Those are the people who are loving, merciful, kind, prudent, just, temperate. If the priests and the pastors and the bishops and the cardinals and the papacy are not deeply concerned with the acquisition of the Holy Spirit in their own hearts, in their own personal lives, right? That, that downflow of grace is for the church going to be impeded. Can the Holy Spirit break through and create great saints in a horrible ecclesiastical situation? Yes. Jesus says the Holy Ghost bloweth where he wills. That's in John's gospel. But collectively, as a church, 
we know that there are decades and centuries of greater and lesser sanctity. That's a problem for our time. And yet, as Father Charbel says, the saints in heaven are looking down at this time, 2023, and saying, put me in coach. Man, I wish I could have lived in 2023. The opportunities to live a supernatural life as a disciple of Jesus Christ in 2023 are magnificent. Put me in coach. But their time is over. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost created you and chose you to live in 2023 to be a great saint. If I could choose my century, I'd be living in the 1200s. I'd be like, Thomas Aquinas, can I please be your secretary? That's what I would want. But for some reason, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost said, Taylor Marshall, yeah, he's going to be born in the 1970s. Put him in there. I don't know my full purpose, but for some reason, Almighty God chose all of y'all watching right now. There's no dead people watching. He chose y'all to be alive right now. So, should you be offended that there are priests still having orgies This only spilled out into the public because the male prostitute passed out and the police had to come. If he hadn't passed out, no one would know about this. I mean, how often does this happen? Priests out there, come on. Should we be offended? Yes. Should we stop believing what we believe because there was an orgy in Rome or in Poland? We never leave Jesus because of the presence of Judas. That would be a really dumb thing to do. You never jump off Noah's Ark because there's lions and snakes and goats aboard the ship. You just got to protect yourself. You got to go to a different part of the boat. You got to say, hey, wife and kids, we're going to go over here for now where it's safe or as safe as we can get but we are not jumping off the boat. And by jumping off the boat, I mean leaving the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Do not do that. All right, we're going to pray a Hail Mary together now. We're going to pray it for the priests. Holy priests. God give us holy priests who love Our Lady. Oremus. Nomini Patris et Fidi, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et et or mortis nostri. Amen. God give us holy priests. God give us holy families. Nomini Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, remember, our Lord Jesus Christ says, you're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless and Godspeed.